is common knowledge that Afrobeat was invented and so named by Fela and Nicola Bokuti of Nigeria. Well, now it is also widely known that in spite of Fela's Afrocentric nature, that Afrobeat has become global music and um, all the artists have told same line, same rhythm of Fela and Nicola Bokuti. One of such is Chicago's Chicago Afrobeat project. Um, first of all, I want to ask, why do you call your, your group a project? Um, you know, it's kind of, uh, when we started the group, we figured there would be a lot of collaborations and rotation with different players and things like that. So uh, the idea was to kind of keep it open and, and friendly to um, just working with different people and and uh, kind of evolving our own styles and sounds and things like that. So that's kind of why we were drawn to the word project. But um, I'd say, you know, in, in ways it, it did turn out that way a lot, but um, you know, I feel like we also kind of uh, dug in and got a direction too and settled on it. But that was originally the idea. Only 10 years since their birth from the underground Chicago lofty party scene, Chicago Afrobeat Project has performed coast to coast at clubs and festivals all over the United States. Over the years, the group has defined and redefined their signature version of Afrobeat. Their latest work is reaching into new territories, incorporating elements of hip-hop, orchestra-like musical arrangement, and exciting stylistic exploration, touching on rock, jazz, and funk. music that um, it, it kind of combines everything that I like about music. It has uh, a dance element, it has um, a, uh, solos, it has orchestration, interlocking parts and polyrhythms and not a lot of heavy like 2-4 snare stuff so it just, uh, yeah, it's, it's really, um, it's music that the first time I heard it, I always, it's kind of a funny story. I, I actually didn't like it. I heard, a, I heard a song and I was just, I didn't really get it. And then the second time I heard uh, a Fela tune, 
I was just like blown away. And from that point on, just knew I really wanted to play the style. And um, yeah, it's like a part of our DNA. We've been playing Afrobeat for so long. <laughs> My name is Justin Boyd. I play drums for Chicago Afro Beat. Um, are, you, are you a regular actor? I am. I've been playing with the group for like for two or three years. Um, yeah, it's, it's Afro Beat drumming is something totally different. Uh, it's a mixture of a lot of things. So it's a, it's a great experience to hone those skills. I understand that you guys are planning a trip to Nigeria. Are you, are you looking forward to it? I am. Uh, I actually um, met some people from Nigeria a few weeks ago, and uh, I'm very excited to go to Nigeria. So, yeah, yeah. Ganjima Otachi Oke Gaskin. Wow. You were yes. born raised in Chicago? Yes, I was. My uh, mother wanted me to have uh, an African name, so she gave me uh, my first name is Hausa, male child born on Friday. Yeah, my middle name, Otachioke. Uh, then at birth and gift from God, Igbo. Well, we're born and raised in Chicago. Yeah, that's beautiful. So you, uh, what, um, you the, uh, Percussion, yes. Congas, block, and bell, and shake it Which are uh, like the staple in Afrobeat music. You need at least someone playing a block, someone playing a shaker, and congas. It was like for the group um, no, I joined the group in uh, 2005. Uh, there's uh, one of the founding members, the trombonist, who's no longer with us uh, in Chicago. He, he moved elsewhere. He brought me in uh, actually through Ugochi. Uh, I used to play with Ugochi. And the uh, trombonist for Chicago Afrobeat Project was on a gig with uh, Ugochi. And I, and uh, he brought me into this group. I don't think I would have made it.
I'd also like to take a moment to introduce Goshi, who's going to be singing on a few songs with us. Give it up for Goshi, y'all! Well, I'm 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 kind of like an honorary member. I, I sing with many bands. I have my own band that is Goti and Ashe, and and we're all um, performers in the city. So we run, we run into each other a lot of times. And the kind of music I make is a blend of Afrobeat, and reggae, and soul and jazz. So they um, I'm just playing around. They ask me if I would accompany them. So sometimes I sit in with them when my schedule allows, which is fine because not too many people that can do Afrobeat music. So.
And now, who are these? Who are Chicago Afrobeat Project? Dave Glines on guitar. Do you travel to Nigeria? I've not been. We're supposed to go this December, so we'll see. Okay. Yeah, how do you um, get yourself into the, you know, into the secrecy of, um, of Afrobeat? Afrobeat kind of thing it is. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, um, I've picked up a little pigeon English just from listening to my uh, my wife speak and having a lot of Nigerian friends uh, and family, but I think the, uh, the mu listening to the music is the... The biggest way that we've all kind of picked up on the, the feel of the, of, of the music and the patterns of the, of the vocals and the patterns of the, the rhythms of the music, it's all just, it's all laid out in front of you as long as you listen critically and listen to what is working and how the instruments play with each other and interlock with each other. It's hard to not pick it up after listening to it as much as we've had, you know? So. Yeah, we played with uh, Shayun and we played with Tony Allen uh, about a month ago, which was amazing. So much fun. He was an amazing person and amazing musician. Changed uh, all of our lives just working with him. Um, Many, many people believe that without Tony Allen, the love would have been for a lot. Yeah. Because he, 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 he was just instrumental to a lot of our um, uh, things going behind. The lads had the philosophy that somebody had to be in charge of the music. About the music. Yeah, and, and it was interesting because I, I talked to Tony about that a little bit too. Like, he wanted to get his perspective and. I think that um, there was this mutual respect between, uh, from what Tony has told me, this mutual respect between Fela and Tony. Like, and when Tony said, you know, he wasn't going to play in the band anymore, like Tony had to, you know, uh, help. He helped audition. You know, like he didn't have to. He actually was just there and helped. You know, like Fela asked him to do it, and they were all, you know, they were still tight. And Fela produced his records after, you know, the first few Tony Allen records after he died decided not to play with Phil anymore, so he's, uh, his, his musical perspective that he brings to the sound is so unique and uh, spacious between the beats and the patterns that it makes sense that um, people would say that about Tony, so I mean, listen to his drumming, it's like ridiculous, he's just, he's got a sick, sick pocket, sick feel, it's just amazing. Garrick Smith. Baritone saxophone. My name is uh, Garrett Smith. I play Barry Sax. I've been around uh, since just about the very, very beginning, so I've been around about 10 years, 10 and a half years in the band. So, how, how do you feel about Afrobeat? What, in your, in your own um, uh, you know, judgment, what makes it different from other kind of jazz? Man, from the moment I heard it, it just kind of like. I, I couldn't believe I hadn't been listening to it earlier. Um, you know, I didn't understand why Fela wasn't more well known, along with Tony Allen and you know the, the other things that they were doing. I didn't understand why he wasn't as big as Bob Marley and stuff like that. It was just as fantastic, and, you know, different styles, a little bit more militant. And it just kind of spoke to me that way. Dude didn't care. He just said what he wanted to and put it out there and took the consequences and made some fantastic music behind it, you know, just really awesomely groove oriented. So. Kevin Ford, keyboards. How do you face the challenge of, um, you know, doing the songs? Because I, I can see that a lot of the songs you do, you still do in uh, the native idiom, like, I mean, uh, the way the La would have, uh, you know, done those. Mm, you know, sure. Yeah. How, how, how do you, you know, go around that, you know, since you didn't, I mean, live in that culture? Yeah, you know, it's. Uh, I think music kind of transcends a lot of things. Um, I feel like um, it is possible to, when you study the music of another culture, um, I feel like you can really tap into something that's very open about it. It's very non-exclusive, especially the musical side of a culture, I would say, um, possibly, um, compared to like, you know, art or, some other elements of the culture, music tends to be more accessible and I feel like there's always been a musical exchange between cultures and things like that. So I feel like it's it's um, 
once we started getting into it and once we started working with uh, different African musicians in Chicago, uh, I feel like we started to kind of get the vibe and kind of a more natural way. We sort of got schooled in it a little bit by different people. Yeah. Have you had that much, um, you know, um, uh, contact with the Philadelphia Protégés? Like his songs and um... Well, uh, yeah, I, we've had, um, I actually did an interview with uh, Femi Kuti for the Chicago Reader, so I talked to him on the phone for about an hour. Uh, that was interesting. We, we did a show at the House of Blues with Sayum Kuti, and he um, had a lot of us come up on stage with him and um, perform with him and stuff at the end of his set. That was really cool. Um, and then we did something with Tony Allen recently where we had him come out and we did a, a miniature tour with him and a studio session. We actually did a whole album with Tony Allen. So that was a really good culmination as far as feeling like uh, a culmination of getting sort of feeling legitimate or getting initiated into the world of Afrobeat and feeling like we're really a part of it. He was very um, very accepting of us and really just kind of became one of us and, and uh, that was that was a very cool experience. Yeah. But we, now, you know, you finally, are you planning a tour of them? Um, we're hoping to tour with Tony Allen next year is the goal. Oh, okay. So there's, there's talk of that and maybe even the South American tour with Tony. So we'd like to work with him as much as possible and he seems interested in working with us in the future. So yes, we are looking forward to that and getting the record out with him on it. So we're in the process of producing that right now, doing the overdubs and the production. So thank you so much. Yeah, thanks a lot. I appreciate it. Yeah, appreciate it. Thank you. Studio shaman Angelo Garcia on tenor saxophone, Antar Jackson, a vocalist, Justin Boyd, drum set, Ricardo Gonzalez, drum set, Danjuma Gaskin, percussion. So, um, yeah. Next year. Right? Next year. Yeah. Uh, plenty of time to prepare, but I'm excited. Very looking forward to it. Yes. Yes. Graham Chart on um, bass. Joe Shell on bass. Mark Thompson on trombone. Chadwick, painter. Select shows. He attends TJ Okwola, talking drum, select shows, Tosha Alston and Imani Detri are the dancers. <laughs> the dancers that you watched and you were watching on this show. And uh, they also perform select shows. Chicago, Alphabet, <laughs> Oh
you born and raised in Chicago? I was. I was born, my parents came to this country in the 68. And so I was one of the um, the first group born here. I have an older sister and brother that were born in Nigeria. And then uh, the last three of us were born here, yes. So um, do, you, um, do you do anything traditional, anything cultural? I mean, it has to and it has, it has affiliation with your culture, the Igbo culture. Oh, everything. I mean, just because I'm in Chicago, I mean, my house is, is Nigeria now. My, my parents are very Nigerian. Everything we do, my father is still connected, very connected with Ngwa land. We, um, we're connected with uh, different organizations. I mean, we just happen to live in Chicago, but we're very much in the, in the, in, in the Igbo community here and at home. So um, even when I went home, we did a lot of work with the, uh, with the, the our village of uh, my cousins and even with the uh, community at large. I mean, my, my parents and my family are very active, so they taught us to reach back to home all the time. So, you know, we no. still stay in touch with cousins and, you know, what we can. about home. Where is home, I should huh. Home for me is Umunquo. I, I'm, I'm from Abia State, and I live in, uh, when I go home, I stay in my father's compound, which is in Ike Mbosi, and that's where I stay. I don't usually go to Lagos like most people, and I, I stay in the village with my family, so. Wow. Mm -hmm. you speak the language? Uh, I'm about uh, 80%. I'm getting, <laughs> you know, I'm getting better every time. My cousins make me speak to them, so every time I go, I get stronger with it. Okay, so you listen to me.